Well, um, congratulations on the job. And right off the bat, uh, you were here for the uh, St. Louis Rams. How do you remember your, your time here with the Rams? Not a lot of wins. So this is my second chance to redeem myself. Obviously, that was a little tougher being I wasn't a one-man show at the time. But, uh, yeah, I loved my time there. Listen, I still got a lot of great, close, personal friends. Tory Holt, Holt, Orlando Pace, Mark Bolger, Stephen Jackson. I mean, all those guys are my buddies. Kurt Warner, Trent Green. I mean, it was just fun uh, to be there. Kurt wasn't there, but we ended up playing together in Arizona. But I know everybody's so passionate about those guys. You know, listen, I love my time there. It was a very family-oriented city. Uh, I really dove into all the towns and the places and the good eats and, and everything that was around the culture of St. Louis. And I can't wait to come back. Super excited to immerse myself with the fan base and the community and uh, call that home for us for 2023. Do you remember a uh, favorite restaurant or a watering hole in St. Louis while you were here? Yeah, I'll tell you, you know, I, I was down at uh, Italian guy. I was down the hill quite a bit. So Charlie Gito's was a spot I'd like to go to quite often. Uh, but yeah, listen, I, I like to get in my car sometimes, drive around, hit those kind of mom and pop shops around the area and the city and the towns around it. So uh, I love food and I'll definitely be trying to get some when I come through town. Okay, let's, let's, let's don't bury the lead because my name is Cusimano. You are Italian? Yeah, so uh, my mom's side, full-blooded Italian. Uh, my dad was born in Hawaii. And uh, my, my grandfather was stationed there. My grandmother grew up in Hawaii. So I have that Hawaiian German last name for my grandfather. And of course, my mom's full-blooded Italian. So I got that blood in me. So that, that food is all, always resonates as a priority for me. Very nice. All right. So about your club in St. Louis uh, next February, besides throwing to the tight end on every play, what else can we expect from an Anthony Beck team? Well, you know, we'll definitely have tight ends on the field. You know, listen, I want to be as explosive as possible, depending on our personnel. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to try to find players, skilled players, quarterbacks that can go out there and we can make it easy for them to be very complex and explosive on the field. You know, this league is not about, you know, I don't think anybody wants a three to six game. They want some excitement and we're going to try to bring that to the table. The challenges are five weeks training camp, getting everybody going and buying into what we're trying to do. So it's my job to get the best teachers and implement the best way to teach these guys the fastest so we can maximize their skill set. Because ultimately it's going to be about the players and what they do on the field. And then ho hopefully that translates to wins, which I know it will. So uh, I'm excited about building that roster. Got a, a great team around me and I'm excited about the staff we have in place now. And the guys will be announcing here over the next couple months. Okay, so you had to have uh, found out when you knew you were going to be the head coach of the Rams, I mean the Battlehawks, that the attendance was staggering, just blew away every city. You're walking into kind of a football hotbed, and you know that. I do. Now, I was, I was desperately kind of on the side pushing to be the head coach of St. Louis because of that. Listen, I think it's vitally important to be in a city that cares about what you're doing, the team you have, and the players. There's nothing better for me as a player than walking into a stadium and seeing a packed house. And you're right. I saw some of the videos. I know they were going to open up the second level there, that last game before COVID hit. I think my early hashtag right now, and I'm going to tweak it a little bit to make it better, but, you know, we want to get that full, fill the top. I mean, I want to fill the top this year. Let's get more fans there. Let's get them at the game. This is a very fan-centric league. Uh, that's very important to ownership. It's important to me. Uh, I want to meet as many fans as possible. I want them to know our players, love our players, put their names on the back of their jerseys for the guys that are on the field. And I think it's going to be exciting. But you're right. There's no doubt, Frank. The fan base was exciting. And I was hoping that I got that call to be the St. Louis head coach. Coach, we were a little disappointed to find out today that you're not going to practice here. Tell me the league's thoughts on that. Well, you know, listen, I think this league wants to be around for an extended period of time. Uh, you have to make decisions that are in line with how you can build the build these this league, build the team, build the fan base, and build the, the the business venture so that everything's in place. And at some point, I think that that will happen. I actually like the idea early on. Everybody's going to be in a uniform place, you know. Collectively, you know, they really want to pay attention to the players, how they treat the players, making sure they have the best of everything they need, and to have everybody in one spot, they can really collaborate and really sell that and be and, and make what's best for the players 
throughout each team. The fact that we're playing in the cities and we'll be there uh, to play those games is vitally important. I think that's crucial. We're doing that. So that's going to be great. So I'm going to do my best between now and the season. When we get the draft in November, we have some players. We're going to immerse ourselves into the community. But, uh, you know, listen, I think right now just having that team being announced, we're going to play in, in St. Louis. St. Louis is back to have those games on those weekends uh, right after the Super Bowl is going to be exciting. And at some point as this league grows and can show the depth and the length and the long-term success, uh, that, that I'm sure is in the plans for ownership. Um, I know you just got the job and there's a lot of other things on your plate right now, but the last time the Battle Hawks were here, uh, they had a quarterback by the name of Jordan Tiamu who kind of like became a, a quick cult hero in the city. Has there been any conversation with you and your staff? Hey, let's bring him back. Well, listen, Jordan did an uh, outstanding job. Uh, you know, he, he did well in the spring league most recently. Uh, we're looking at everybody, man. I think the goal for me is to bring the very best talent players, whoever that may be, to help us put a winning product on the field, to help us be exciting. Uh, I want good players. I want good people. Uh, I want guys that are, are excited about what they're doing. Uh, they're good, good kids, good players that understand that, you know, there's a bigger purpose. And every one of these, these young men are going to be positioned themselves to have a great opportunity with us, the XFL and everybody. So we'll see about him. We'll see about a lot of players. Uh, where everybody's going to have an equal opportunity. I mean, obviously when you play well, everybody wants you. So, you know, there is going to be a draft. We're going to try to centralize and, and get our staff together. You know, Dave Bowler is my D, uh, DPP slash GM. So he's going to be on top of all this stuff. We're going to build that board and we're going to get the very best players we can. All right. What about the name? And again, it may not be your call, <laughs> but that name really hit, hit it off here in St. Louis, Battle Hawks. What are the odds that, that will be the team name. Give us a little insight here, Coach. Yeah, I, well, it's a little bit above my pay grade, Frank, right? But I say this. I think fans, everybody are going to be excited about what it's going to be, how it's going to look, and all of those things. Uh, it will be coming soon. And and once the, the league lays that out, I'll be front and center of that as well. And uh, I think uh, everybody can be excited about it. So excited to see it. Excited to see what it looks like. Is it the same? Is it not? Uh, all I can say is fans are going to be excited and happy about uh, the decisions that ownership are going to make. Give me your best story about the rock. Uh, what, what jumps out at you about dealing with him? Well, can, can I get a couple retweets so I can get some of those followers that he has? I mean, this guy's electric, man. I, I think the one thing that I've noticed about him, you know, we all know his personality and we see him on his social media and you see him in his movies and everything he's accomplished. But I'll tell you, man, when we sit down with him behind closed doors and he talks about, being that guy that wanted to be an NFL player, being that 54th guy that didn't get that opportunity to make that 53-man roster kind of resonates a little bit and it strikes a chord. You want to go out and make this thing really take legs and, and take off. Uh, he's super passionate about this. Uh, you know, his, his mindset is super long-term. He wants this to be the go-to place for those players to give them those chances. And uh, he's all in, man. So he's been awesome. He's all about it. Danny Garcia, obviously the first female. She's she's superwoman, right? She is absolutely awesome. Uh, her acumen is incredible. She's an absolute great human being. I love working for her. And you really want to go out and do great for these people. So I'm, I'm excited about it. But he is, uh, man, he's a great guy. He is a great dude. And he is very passionate about this league and about these players that are coming in. 